The first question in the Quran is, Oh Allah, can I make it back to paradise? And the last moment of the believer highlighted here is you are coming back to paradise, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your Lord has not forsaken you. Your Lord has not cut you off. Your Lord never forgot you. When you experience Eid, inshallah, coming close, you just look at one thing that you say, you can say to yourself is this is not my, I mean, this is Allah's deen. Allah is in total control. He is in total control and he will handle the situation. And so we're actually witnessing waves of people becoming Muslim on the internet because of what's the, you know, the, the, what, what's, what looks outwardly like a lot of loss and what we experience as a community as a lot of tragedy and loss. But there's an inner reality that we're experiencing at the same time, alhamdulillah. And this will be with us for a long time to come. When people start entering into the religion of Islam in waves, this is something we have to pay attention to. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome to the final episode of Quran 30 for 30. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept every deed of Ramadan and to allow you to have a blessed Eid. We have truly enjoyed being in your company and being in the shade of the Quran, alhamdulillah rabbil ameen, for these 30 days once again. And we want to remind you all inshallah ta'ala to please, you know, put in your last donations inshallah ta'ala to yaqeen, but also Give us your du'as bidnillahi ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from everyone that's been behind the scenes, literally behind the cameras uh, in this entire production, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, all of the work that's come out. And of course, to keep your brothers and sisters around the world in your du'a. But of course, for the final time for 30 for 30, Shaykh Abdullah Dur, Zakallah This is not a farewell. You make it like it's a farewell. It, it always feels like that though. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and accept from you. You too. Man. And elevate you, inshallah ta'ala. And we'll do a bonus, inshallah. We got a bonus, inshallah. Inshallah. We'll do, we'll inshallah. do something else, inshallah ta'ala. So stay tuned. We'll just, we'll let you know what it is, but stay tuned, inshallah ta'ala. Shaykh Abdullah is not getting, getting rid of us just yet. <laughs> and Alhamdulillah, for the first time on Yaqeen, but also, um, Alhamdulillah, someone we've, we've known for a long time and uh, inshallah won't be her last time. Uh, Ustad the Muslima Permal, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and increase you Amen. here in California, uh, along with her husband, Sheikh Jamal Diwan, you all have the majlis, alhamdulillah, the majlis.us. And very clearly said not to say to the majlis.us, the majlis.us. And mashallah recently launched the Anas ibn Malik program, uh, community service program, alhamdulillah, amazing efforts that are coming out of here. Welcome, alhamdulillah, to Quran 30 for 30, Ustaz Muslim. It's wonderful to have you. It's an honor to be here. Allah yabarak fikum. Jazakum Allah khair. So of course, before we get started, inshallah ta'ala, the question from yesterday's Juz, Juz 29. What was the first surah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Juz 29, of course, after the first few ayats when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation in Hira? So what was the first surah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received, which is in Juz 29? Please answer below, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And we'll go ahead and get started, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So when we come to Juz Amma, one of the things that the ulama mentioned of the fada'il of this juz, of the virtues of this juz, is that every theme of the Qur'an is present in Juz Amma. Whether you're talking about the prophets or the messengers, or you're talking about qiyamah or the hereafter, or you're talking about victory or loss, you're talking about individual and community growth, it is all found in Juz Amma. And in fact, subhanAllah, the reality is made clear in Juz Amma. All of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about throughout the other 29 Juz, Allah Azza wa Jal shows the manifestation of that. There's Ayn ul Yaqeen, the realization and the experience of seeing things come to fruition. So very vivid descriptions of a person on the day of judgment, of a person when death comes to them, of a person when victory comes to them or when trial comes to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows that in his qadr, Everything that happens to the believer is indeed khair. And so you'll find, as Ustad al Muslim will talk about, Ida ja'a Nasrullahi wal Fatih, Surah al Nasr, you also have Surah al Buruj. So, Ashab al Ukhdud, the people of the ditch, victory comes to them just as it came to the Prophet while he was standing on Safa, once again victorious, because victory is in those who maintain their connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite all circumstances. And they maintain their focus on the ultimate goal. So I want to take you back to the very first juz when Adam alayhi salam speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with some words of repentance and of the words that Adam alayhi salam says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very, very beginning, in the beginning of the story, 
As Mujahid rahimahullah narrates, Adam A.S. says, Ya Rabb, ara'ayta in tubtu, hal anta raji'i ila al-jannah? Oh my Lord, if I repent and if I rectify my affairs, will you return me back to Jannah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Naam, yes, you will return to Jannah. And so it starts off with this journey of how to get back to Jannah. And when we think about inna ma'al usri yusra, verily with hardship comes ease, the ultimate ease to every hardship in this dunya is Jannah, is paradise, the promise of paradise being realized. Now go to the last few verses of Surah Al-Fajr, which is the ultimate yusr, the ultimate ease, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna, O soul that is at peace. In Surah Al-Qiyamah, Allah Azza wa swears by an nafs al-lawama, the soul that admonishes itself. In Juz Amma, in this last Juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the soul that is now at peace. Some of the scholars say, that no one reaches a nafs al mutma'inna to be a soul at peace, except that they went through the stage of being a nafs al lawama, the soul that blames itself, the soul that admonishes itself. And so now, a nafs al mutma'inna is being told, soul at peace is being told, irji'i ila rabbiki, come back to your Lord, pleased and well pleasing. Radiyatan mardiyah, pleased and well pleasing. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let you know that He is pleased with you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets you know from the very moment that you are leaving this life, that you are returning back to a Rabb who wants to meet you. And this is when the Prophet says, whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet them. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, but we all hate death. But the Prophet said, for the believer, إِذَا bushira, when they are given the glad tidings of the mercy of Allah, of His forgiveness, of His pleasure, أَحَبَّ liqa Allah, can't wait to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. Irji'i ila rabbiki. Radiyatan mardiya. Come back to your Lord, pleased and pleasing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fadukhuli fi ibadi. Wadukhuli jannati. Enter you amongst my servants. Enter you my paradise. The first question in the Quran is, O oh Allah, can I make it back to paradise? And the last moment of the believer highlighted here is you are coming back to paradise, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your Lord has not forsaken you. Your Lord has not cut you off. Your Lord never forgot you. As long as you continue to remember Him, and as long as you follow that path of guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will welcome you back to the place of paradise. And this is the entire journey of the believer encapsulated. Now there are still those, al haq mutakafir, who are just disturbed, or rather who are distracted, by the elements and the affairs of this world until they go to the grave. And the last thing I'll say here, subhanAllah, is you know, Allah Azza wa mentions Hatta Zurtum al Maqabr until you visit your graves. For the believer, their comfort is from the moment that their souls leave their bodies. And it only becomes comfort upon comfort upon comfort until we enter Bidnillahi Ta'ala into the ultimate conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the highest level of paradise. May Allah make us amongst those people. And we're around the kawthar of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah make us amongst those people. And so our haqa, our aynul yaqeen, our witnessing of reality is the reality that we all wished would exist with eyes that couldn't see it yet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow everything that happens to us and everything that we do to lead us back through that kabad, through that toil, to the place of ease, to the place of felicity. Allahumma ameen. InshaAllah ta'ala, I'll pass it off to Shaykh Abdullah. Jazakumullahu khayran. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. Congratulations, jama'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this blessed Ramadan something that is a catalyst for you for a new beginning, a new good habit, a new way of establishing or solidifying and strengthening your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, a catalyst, not seasonal. You know, we want this to be a new version of ourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the people around us. So I want to say really, congratulations. This is a huge accomplishment for those of you that this was your first Ramadan. Whether you are someone that just embraced Islam, or you are someone that has been Muslim and you're trying your best, congratulations. You have approached this day of Eid, inshallah, coming. And it's this day of celebration for you to raise the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within yourself and also by verbalizing it. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ Allah mentions in the chapter of Baqarah 
that you complete this appointed term and you to kabbir Allah, you say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Remembering the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being that one of his names is Al Akbar. He is the one that is the greatest and due to the, the fact of him being the greatest, he has given us a framework that can make us be great within ourselves if we go through that struggle. But the struggle is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. We can't assay you come mashkuran. And your struggle is well appreciated. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also makes this path easy for us. And subhanAllah, sometimes it can come down to our perception. You know, those people that you're around, what are your thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are your thoughts about the creator? And how does that manifest in your belief? Because a thought can turn into a belief, obviously, and in your actions. Two verses I want to touch on in one chapter of the Quran. Many of us hear it in Surah Al Jum'ah uh, or in the, in the day of Jum'ah, Yom Al Jum'ah, in the prayer of Jum'ah, that the Prophet used to recite this chapter. Uh, and also in the Salat Al Janazah, he would recite this chapter, excuse me, in Eid, he would recite this chapter as well. As well. And this is the chapter of Al A'la, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Most High. Al A'la meaning the Most High. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in just two verses, which I want to cover here. Where he says after Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, when when you see the Yusra, forget in nafat dhikra. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, and we will make for you, make easy for you the path of ease. When you see the Lil Yusra, and this is very interesting because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also says, in nahad the Deen of Yusra, that really this religion is easy, or it can be understood because the previous verses, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala was talking about the revelation of the Quran coming to him and how he should recite this beautiful book, and he will not forget except with that which Allah wills. Illa ma sha Allah. Now here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about making this pathway easy for him, meaning that firstly this way is easy for you, so understanding that this way of Islam can be easy when we make this effort to practice this faith and to propagate this faith to the people. But the propagation of you telling people about Islam or acting accordingly in compliance with Islam can be a struggle at times, but having that overall view that we as Muslims, whether reciting the Quran or practicing the Quran, living the Quran in your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, in and remind if that reminder is beneficial. This is important because some scholars have differed in regards to in if the reminder serves benefit. Now, does that rely solely on our understanding or our, uh, what we may perceive that this message that is easy for me and has made, been made easy for me to propagate, is it beneficial to that person? Will it benefit that person? My non-Muslim relative, my family member who has a bad outlook on Islam and Muslims, should I just stop telling them about the religion? Should I stop reminding them about being a good person? Should I stop reminding them about Allah? Should I stop saying the name of Allah around them? The scholars mentioned particularly, no, if it is beneficial within the qadr of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if it is ultimately beneficial for them. It is not our responsibility in that regard. One understanding. Because what can happen is where people will say, well, no, I'm going to withhold telling this person about prayer. I'm going to withhold telling this person about calling to the good, or I'm going to withhold forbidding evil from that that I may see in front of me. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge is everlasting. He knows our responsibility is to tell the people. There's a small caveat here. We have to know the hal, the situation to where determining with that family member, is it going to be something that is beneficial? We can use our judgment, but the general status, the general way that we should understand is that we should initially have within our intention to call people to the good and to forbid the evil. And that is what is important. And knowing that the deen of Islam is easy, it's important for us with these beautiful verses that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told the companions, act in an acting and doing the good deeds for everything has been easy for those in which Allah SWT has created them, facilitated for them that ease. So ultimately within these two verses, it reminds us that the deen of Islam is easy based on our perception inshallah that the Sharia has been made easy for us and never forget to call people to that which is good, calling to the, to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that path easy for us. Barakallahu feekum. Ustaz Muslim, barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum, barakallahu feekum. It was such a pleasure to benefit from you both today. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لغة من لساني يفقه قولي uh, It's really an honor and a pleasure to be with you all on this last day of Ramadan uh, Congratulations on completing the 30 days up until this point and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of you a beautiful and blessed Eid um, I, I wanted us to look at some, the, you know, this on this last day of Ramadan, the last surah that was, uh, the Mufassirin believe was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in totality, and that is Surah Al-Nasr. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, إِذَا جَاءَ النَّصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحُ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينَ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا when God's help and victory come and you see mankind entering God's religion in throngs, him the praises of thy Lord and seek forgiveness from him, truly he is the ever relenting or the oft for returning uh, in mercy. So this surah, uh, there are three opinions about when it was revealed. The first opinion is that it was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad when he set out for the Battle of Hunayn. And there's a minority opinion that says this surah was actually revealed during the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, referring to a later on Fatah Mecca. And then the third opinion is, and this is the majority opinion, is that this surah was revealed during the farewell pil pilgrimage of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And so if you think about the three different asbab or reasons for times, occasions in which this was revealed, it could have different indications. Uh, Imam Ibn Ajiba, he says that the word Nasr in Arabic is idhar al adu. It's to become manifest over the enemy. And uh, as such, you know, it, it, it would, that would be the direct meaning uh, if the reason of revelation was uh, at the time of the Battle of Hunayn. Uh, it would also be a reference to all of the victories, the manifest outward victories on this earth um, if it was uh, during the time of the farewell pilgrimage because of how Islam spread all over the world right after the passing of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and also insofar as the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, obviously the opening of the city of Mecca. But the surah itself, it uses this term Nasr for victory. And the linguistic meaning does have reference to, to battlefield victory. But the next line of the surah calls our attention to the true victory. So there's an outward victory that is to become manifest on the battlefield. But the inner victory is for hearts to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That waves of people start entering into the folds of Islam. That is the victory that Allah is telling us to pay attention to. And this is something that, subhanAllah, we have witnessed it in Islamic history many times. And many times we have experienced it right after or during a very difficult tribulation. You can say that in, in this country, for example, we witnessed as an ummah, waves of people entering Islam during the civil rights movement. African-Americans all over this country were becoming Muslim in waves. The first masajid, the first, I mean, they were here obviously uh, a long time ago, but them coming back into the religion of their heritage. We witnessed that in America. Now recently with, and, and with what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, something that I have noticed and and on one hand, we're in so much pain because of what's happening to our brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, it's, you can't, we can't even talk about it. But on the other hand, I have never seen anything like this in my life where there are social media conversions happening all over the world. There are people who are literally becoming Muslim as they're watching what's happening in Palestine and they're recognizing that truth is truth and falsehood is falsehood. And I want to be on the side of truth. And they're looking at the faith of the Palestinians and saying, I have never seen anything like that. And so we're actually witnessing waves of people becoming Muslim on the internet because of what's the, you know, the, the, what, what's, what looks outwardly like a lot of loss and what we experience as a community as a lot of tragedy and loss. But there's an inner reality that we're experiencing at the same time, alhamdulillah. And this will be with us for a long time to come. When people start entering into the religion of Islam in waves, this is something we have to pay attention to. And Allah tells us when we see this, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ To him the praises of our Lord, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning it's not you who did this, right? It, you know, when you're sitting at a da'wah table or you're talking to people about Islam, if that person's heart changes, we have to realize that we're asbab, we're, we're, we're reasons, but the actual turner of the hearts, 
in these moments is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to give praise where praise is due, that it, all of the good, all of the, that we see in this world, we have to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And we have to thank him for allowing us to be means of it because it didn't have to be us. It could have been anyone else. And so this idea of turning to him, praising him, and also repenting to him for our shortcomings. It's easy for us when we see something to take credit. Think about all the Ramadan programming you just went through, all the beautiful qiyams, literally waves of people entering the masajid that haven't been there in a long time. And the, the masjid organizers might be feeling really proud of themselves. Volunteers might be feeling really proud of themselves. The person who made the flyer might be feeling really proud of themselves. The speaker at the qiyam may be looking at the crowd feeling really proud of themselves. But Allah says to praise him. When we see those waves, that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek our forgiveness, that we necessarily we're imperfect, necessarily we have shortcomings. And to receive it as a gift from him and not something that we give that credit to ourselves. And there's so much to say about this surah, obviously, but this was something I wanted to share with us when we see the waves of people in Eid, inshallah, tomorrow, uh, to, to rejoice in that. Uh, and to, when the hearts are coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan, that's a victory. That's a huge victory. All the people coming back to the masjid who haven't been there in months and in years. This is a victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we must pay attention to it. We must praise him for it. And we enter Eid, inshallah, with that spirit of praise. Barakallahu fikum and what was good is from Allah, what was mistaken is from myself. Allah yibarakatuh, Muslim. One of the things that many of the ulama mentioned is that Yusra is actually broader than Nusra. Mm -hmm. Nusra is part of Yusra. So mm -hmm. victory is part of the ease, but the ease is far more encompassing. Mm -hmm. Because for the one who only seeks this world, all they want is victory on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And what we want is so much more. Mm -hmm. And that's a differentiating factor between us and our enemies, right? Mm -hmm. And those that oppress. And that was the differentiating factor between the believers on the day of Uhud from Abu Sufyan at that time on the other end. Mm -hmm. min Allahi ma la you want something they don't want. And mm -hmm. so you want Yusr and Nusra is part of Yusra. Victory is part of ease. Mm -hmm. But the greater victory that you seek is the ease in the hereafter. And so that's why you can't really lose mm -hmm. because if you don't attain victory in this world, you do attain it in mm -hmm. the next life. Mm -hmm. So long as you are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's interesting also like Juz Amma takes things that you naturally hate and turns them into things that you love because mm -hmm. they're for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al-mawt, death, you hate mm -hmm. death, mm -hmm. but death becomes a means of ease. Sawfa yuhasabu hisab and yasira, that you'll be judged with an easy accountability. And when Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about that, you know, what's an easy accountability? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you whoever is asked will be punished. And he says, no, this is different. That is just the presentation of your deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And the presentation of the deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah azza wa jal starts to turn those sins into good deeds for the believer, becomes a means of relief, a moment of relief. And so if the most harmful things or the things that you fear most, even in the hereafter, can be made easy, then with perspective, the most hard hard things and or the hardest things and the most harmful things in this dunya can also be made easy if you always maintain that perspective with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. That victory is found in Allah Jalla's acceptance. Ease is found in Allah's acceptance. And it's interesting, yasiruhu al yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra. You keep on hearing the word ease, ease, ease being made clear yeah. um, in these verses, subhanAllah. Yeah, subhanAllah, it's, it's so beautiful. I mean, I like how we cover this chapter, uh, Nasr, because and you tied it into Eid. Mm -hmm. You just, when you look at the Sharia, Allah, you look at the intentionality of the Sharia, how Allah intended, you know, every day there's conditioning five times a day at least. Every month there's something. Every year there's something. One time in a lifetime there's something. Mm -hmm. The Eid is when you see the best of the Islamic community, locally, I'm saying, nationally, or all around the world you see Hajj. But you'll see, let's be honest, Muslims that probably don't come out probably only t until Eid. Fine, everyone's at their level. Everyone's at their level. But you see how the Nusr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the assistance and help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifest and people are coming to the religion afwaj and like you mentioned, the civil rights in Palestine. When you experience Eid, inshallah, coming close, you just look at, one thing that you, say, you can say to yourself is this is not, my, I mean, this is Allah's deen. Allah is in total control. 
He is in total control and he will handle the situation. It's just up to me to believe in him that he's capable. And I try my best to prove that I understand that by doing these actions, coming to the Eid Salah, getting to know my community. But Eid should serve as a reminder that Allah Allah is the one that will complete this light, this light of Islam, and it will flourish, inshallah, whether we like it or not, or whether those that disbelieve like it or not, that this religion, subhanAllah, will flourish and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect it. And that day of Eid should bring mm -hmm. joy, and joy and a sense of tranquility, particularly this year of what's going on with our brothers and sisters around the world, particularly in Gaza. Mm -hmm. So subhanAllah, allow this day to be a day of celebration and a day of joy, mm -hmm. not a day of sorrow. Because, yeah. you know, when we're in this time, we're thinking, okay, our brothers and sisters over there, but as was mentioned upon numerous times, those that have had families, members that have passed away and their brothers and sisters in Palestine, you know, it's a sense of strength for them. Because at that time when that, that faith is activated in those times of hardship, let Eid serve as a time for rejoicing and joy, making dua for our brothers and sisters, inshallah. And something that I was reflecting on, even in the images coming out of Palestine and, and Gaza, is how there's no masjid, the masjids have been bombed, so people are forming masajid outside and praying in jama'ah. Right. And I can only imagine the difficulty that they will experience the Eid, but I, they will still come together and they will they will find a place for everyone to come. Every man, woman, and child will be there and find strength in each other. And, you know, in, in terms of even reflecting on what you said about the Sharia, how it's so balanced, uh, you find this, like we have the Sharia as an aspect that is necessary for, for outward balance. And then you also have haqiqa, which is this inward aspect that is necessary for things to go right. So, you know, this idea of the, the pure intention is there, needs to be there, the sincere intention and then the outward action. Um, the victory on the battlefield and the means and, you know, taking the, going to the protests and doing everything, but inwardly, spiritually relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting our hope and our trust in Him. So you have these, this outward, inward dynamic that gives us the, the ability to, with, to, to be resilient in difficult times. Um, there's a narration of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that like when it comes to victory, it's always struck me. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Abu Huni fi innama tunsurun wa turzaqun bi du'afaikum. Um, seek me amongst the marginalized, like the poor, the, the du'afa, the weak, because truly you are given victory and you are given sustenance because of the du'afa among you. So you think that it's because I did all this outward action. That's necessary, but it's insufficient. There's another aspect of it, which is pairing our hearts to, to being connected to these people. I would say like we need to pair our social justice with social mercy. Our donations have to be louder than our protests. Um, our ability to like give up some like material enjoyments and, and really love our brothers and sisters who are in this, uh, who are the Dwafat right now, uh, at least in this position. And knowing that it's when we seek their dua, they're, they're very special people to be to be tri to have this tribulation. They're not less than anyone. They're actually above everyone in the fact that they're facing this kind of tribulation on behalf of the whole ummah. So we actually need their prayers. Uh, we need, you know, we're learning our iman from them. So we, you know, seek me amongst them. That's what the pro that's the message of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah help us to do that uh, and to, you know, reflect that inward and outward balance in the way that we're going about. Uh, you know, our life in general, but especially what's happening mm -hmm. to them in Palestine. You think about the person of the Prophet Sallallahu and how so, personal so. this all is. Mm -hmm. And the fact that in his Nasr, mm -hmm. in his victory, he has his head to the back of his animal. Mm -hmm. The man Sallallahu mm -hmm. who was most frequent in sujood. Mm -hmm. His enemies gloated over their dead bodies, over mm -hmm. the dead bodies of the believers. The Prophet Sallallahu mm -hmm. forgives them because he conquered his nafs first. He conquered his oh, self wow, first. Wow. And the one who conquers their self can conquer any battle. And so mm -hmm. that's the true Nusra, right? Yeah. And Nusra out of Shaytan to be victorious over the Shaytan, victorious over the self. In Tansurullah and Surkum. In Tansurullah and Surkum. You support Allah as a Jad will support you, absolutely. And SubhanAllah is thinking, Ajab and the Amr al Mu'min, how amazing is the affair of the believer? Look at the difference. The Prophet in his great victory, tasbih and istighfar. Allah is perfect, we still have imperfections to seek forgiveness from. Whereas Allah says in Surah Al Fajr, that same person who Allah has given so much, when Allah takes away a little bit from them, then they say, my Lord is humiliating me. Mm. The Prophet is always in a state of praise and gratitude in hardship and in ease. Surah Al-Duha was in his lowest moment. Surah Al-Nasr was in his highest moment. And the last thing that I'll say here, SubhanAllah, is Eid. You mentioned fi dua remembering the dua even on the day of Eid. Mm -hmm. The, one of the reasons why the Prophet would take a different route home 
then the route that he came to Salat al Eid was so that, as the ulama said, he could give salam to all of the people of Medina. And so there are people on this route and people on that route. And so he wasn't leaving anyone out out his Salat al And that's the greatness of our community as well. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a means of elevation for us as individuals, our communities, our ummah, and a means of alleviating the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Gaza and all over the world. Allahumma ameen. Eid Mubarak once again to all of you and Jazakumullah khairan for being with us and Barakallah fiqh yastad muslimah for being with us for the final episode. And Shaykh Abdullah as always, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you. And we'll see you all inshallah ta'ala. We have a bonus, we'll have something else, but we'll see you all next year inshallah ta'ala uh, as well. And sometime before that also. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.